Okay, th listen, this fourth one, now we're getting some pretty deep stuff. So those are all pretty much the standard sort of things, not that there's anything standard about this, but, uh, but they're the sort of things that I've heard often over many clients. This next one is one of those that you could write a book about, uh, you know, Every so often you get a client uh, who's so advanced and coming from an advanced alien life form and they're able to talk about things in a very different way. Uh, again, Dolores Cannon had these types of clients. She wrote a lot about them. And whilst I'm getting a few of them, uh, this was one of the most exciting I personally had. And uh, she's coming with gifts for mankind. This client immediately showed very deep knowledge. Uh, often it takes clients a few sessions to get deeper and deeper into super consciousness or to really, you know, free it up. But not this one. Uh, I think this was only her second session. Um, she had deep knowledge, especially of the earth changes and an inner awareness of how she's bringing skills to heal the earth with other accompanying student souls later. And she came, she came to me originally at first to start the hypnosis because of course people don't walk in with that knowledge. She came into me because she wanted to know what her mission was on life. She was at a stage in life. She, she felt that she's supposed to be doing something but wasn't sure what it was. She felt, as she said, an urge to, to, find, a, to find somebody doing this sort of work, uh, soul awakening and, and past life regression. So past life regression is just a tool of alchemical um, transformations. Uh, this session is only a second session of quite a few, but uh, this is only the second. Already she starts in a super conscious state. I'm coming in, you'll hear that she says ready. That's the beginning of the thing. We've gone through the, the tunnel of light and time, uh, time and space. Go back through the tunnel through using an Akashic Records book to go back either to a past life or to a future life or some other. And she goes straight away to another planet. Um, she's a true light worker sent to the earth and she'll discuss that similar to these three waves of volunteers that Dolores Cannon goes uh, talks about you'll hear her uh, her processing halfway through all of a sudden she switches from talking about her students and working with plants and how she's going to bring those plants and that consciousness to the earth blah 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 to now all of a sudden she's flipped, which very advanced souls often do this. They seem to be able to change books in a pages in a book and go from one chapter and another and just keep flowing. And she goes into when she's either obviously first seeing the body growing in the fetus of her mother to actually being in it. Now I, I give out of the talks and I think I gave one with George and Chris many years ago about what it's like to come into the fetus, uh, going to talk about that. So, but this is a little unusual because she's talking one minute from another planet and now she's all of a sudden into the O's of the, oh, I've got a brain. It's actually even uh, amusing. Um, she'll talk about this uh, raising of awareness um, and that she had no, which is unusual again, no pre-meeting with the souls that would be her mum and dad. Now, often clients come to me to, to discover whether they have a contract or, which we almost always do, but, uh, but in particular with their parents, did I know them? And I'd say eight, nine, 10 times out of 10, yes. There was a meeting during, during sleep periods, uh, that sort of stuff, meeting the soul. The, the, Brain doesn't remember it, but under super conscious state, they are able to talk about it with great ease. Um, so I'll play that. It's a, I think it's a fascinating one. It's a little longer, but there's a lot of information in it. And I think, well, I hope you'll enjoy it. Ready. 
So tell me where you find yourself, please. Sorry, I meant to say this was recorded in 2016. So it's about four or five years ago before a lot of the really big stuff, uh, the pandemic, the volcanoes, the big fires all around the world in California, many parts of, of Asia and Australia, of course. I'm with... My students. Mm -hmm. oh. So before we get uh, into the the details, give me the generalities. What's the setting, please? Here, what? Uh, where are we? I've come back to see my students. We're in. The plant world. The planet world? Plant. World. The plant world. Mm -hmm. We're herbalists. You're a plant yourself or you tend to plants? I tend to the plants. I am everything. What do you, naturopath is the word, alchemist, herbalist. I've come back. Describe your body to me, please. I'm just a being. Okay, not right human. More now, can you look down towards where your feet would normally be and tell me what you see, please? I see earth. Okay. I see earth, grass, green, trees, plants. <laughs> and I take it you feel very much at home. Oh, it's beautiful. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Oh, the energy is just so pure. Mm. So I take it that any sense of self from the physical form, you don't have a body as such, or you're just, an, uh, you're just a spiritual energy? Uh, uh, is that what you're saying to me? That you don't actually have a solid form? Mm. Mm. Now you tell me that you're teaching, you come home to your students. Just tell me who your students are and what they, they, how they appear to you. And my students are my plants, earth. I'm showing them to use their energy. For this human life. The humans are learning. My students are going to the earth to teach them the essence of the plants. And in time, we will make medicine. That's what the humans like to call it, medicine. Mm -hmm. So the dimension that you're in or on right now uh, is it a is it a dimension of the earth or is it another planet uh, that you're preparing uh, the souls of your plants to come to the earth the second one 
planet. So, is uh, do you know in relation to the Earth how uh, is it in the same galaxy as the Earth? Hmm. Yes. Bringing this energy down to Earth. Mm -hmm. What uh, what what um, advice have you had that it's time to bring uh, your students uh, to begin a a deeper understanding of the plant life? For my students, how is it that you're aware that it's time for you to prep your students and yourself to visit the Earth in in some incarnations to bring this deeper understanding of plants? What have you been told about the earth? What I've been told about the earth. The earth needs much help. The earth, are they called um, humans? Are needing a lot of help. They're needing a lot of love. And with this love, they will heal. And we can do it. Through plants, water, liquid water, water. We are just sending the energy. There will be a lot of acceptance. The earth is ready, and it will be through people, these humans, like yourself to bring the awareness. Mm. Thank you. Now I would like you to imagine right now that you um, are addressing human beings that don't understand uh, the consciousness of plants as well as you do. That the message you're about to give me, uh, I will pass on to others. So I'd like you just to imagine you're in front of uh, people and that they've asked you to express what's the core message that you bring to the earth. These humans need to be responsible. Awareness, what's around them. The beauty to, know, to connect with spirit, plants, the natural state. I see them all there and they're all, oof. They look like their faces. <laughs> They look like faces. They look, their, their faces look their like... Their faces. These humans have no idea. They, they need to be taught. They need to have knowledge. But they're here because they're interested. Alright. So, this... Uh, I take it you're preparing for an incarnation on the Earth. Have you been to the Earth before? In previous uh, times, have you ever incarnated on Earth? Not as a human. But I'm being prepared to incarnate as a human. I need to experience the human body. I need, oh, I've been given a heart. Oh. Oh. I'm being prepared. It's interesting. What, uh, give me a brief outline of how you're being prepared to have a heart and to have a body. You're being prepared by what? Oof. I'm seeing my masters. 
I've got a brain. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, this is how it works. I am a fetus. This is how it all begins. Are you in your mother's body yet? Mm, I think I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here comes the arms and the legs. <laughs> They're growing, are they? <laughs> They're forming. It's interesting. Have you met the soul of your mother? Have you had time to discuss with the being, the soul integrated into the body that is your mother? No. No pre-meeting? No time for the meeting, you say, or no time for something else? No time for the meeting. I trust. You trust I'm a... I trust that I am with the right. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just guided. Okay. You said you've been on the earth before, but not in a human body. What did you, what did you come as before? <laughs> An animal. <laughs> mm. What sort of animal were you? Mm. A cub. A baby cub. Oh, a lion. A lion? I do. Was that recently or are we talking about a long time oh, ago? A long time ago. I didn't have a long life. Did you grow up into being a full line or you, did you? No, no. Very short life, was it? Just very short life. It was just to have a taste of what it was like to be around nature, humans. So let's remind ourselves that we, um, we have a human body that's at rest in Nino's office through whom you are communicating. What would you say uh, to the consciousness of that human body about what you need her to be aware of? She has, or well, we have given her confidence to pursue her project. So let's spell out the project, please. Her project is to keep helping these humans. She's not to push them away. It's time to embrace all human forms. We can see that she is using plants but needs to look into it more. We will make it available. These plants will complement her healing work that she does. Her vibration will be stronger. Mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. Thank you. Now, you mentioned that the earth is ready for this. What do you, what can you tell us about your awareness of the level of change or level of awareness on the earth that is inviting her soul to come to the earth with this upgrade of understanding of herbs and plants? Why now? What's the difference? The Earth, the planet, is not happy. It needs to get... needs to change the vibration. The Earth needs to change in its consciousness, people. 
think that there's a moderate chance of success or it'd be uh, difficult to achieve? What's the long-term prognosis? Very successful. You think that we're going to make it through? Yes, after they drop the fear. The fear is stopping this essence from coming in. They need to embrace these humans need to embrace the change. We're giving them warnings now. Uh, global warming, the temperatures, the changes in the whole solar system. It will settle. Everything will stabilise. I'd like you now just to feel that you can take this opportunity just to concur with your soulmates, your teacher uh, mates, and just bring it up to current circumstances. In the body that's in Nino's office at the moment, she's beginning to awaken to all this. You're bringing through the messages so that she can hear this through the recordings. What's the state as you read the earth at the moment, as you concur with other teacher masters? Um, there's an I see from my office, but I'm only here in a little office in Melbourne, that there is an undercurrent of spiritually awakening human beings, very ordinary people, just mums and dads, mm -hmm. not necessarily the scientists. Uh, is there enough of us? Is, there, is this change, this wave, you've brought many souls here, I've spoken to other evolutionary cycles that are bringing a lot of souls to the earth to be of service during this time of change. What's your reading right now on the earth in the year 2016? Do we see success? Very much so. These humans will be coming, they'll be coming out. They'll be, You'll hear more of them. They won't be hiding. Everyone will be in, out in the open. And this is what ch will change the consciousness of the earth, the planet. It's the fear people are not talking about. But it's starting to change. We need to get people talking, these humans. There will be many souls that will leave the earth plane and new souls will reincarnate compassionate. When you say many souls will live will leave earth plane, are you talking about less evolved souls that are going to be incarnating somewhere else so that we can replace the, yes. uh, their children with older souls for yes. a new time? Yeah? Very, yes. The old souls that need to move. They've done their job here. The old the souls, old souls. That need to move on. You said that uh, as the younger souls die uh, through the natural processes, their, their offspring, their human offspring, will be replaced with older souls, is that correct? Yes. Souls such as the ones that you're bringing to the earth? Yes. And But then you said the older souls have done their work, so um, not, so you're saying that there are older souls coming to the earth. There's Who are you talking about? People, these humans, that they've been here for a long, long, long time need to pass on. We are moving them to another dimension. This planet needs to vibrate on a different level. Be more loving. So would it be fair to say that this was the long term evolutionary plan, plan for this earth? Mm. And we're on the threshold of that change, are we? Yes, yes, yes. So we're on schedule, so to speak? No, no problems. Beautiful. Well, thank you for coming to the Earth with your students. As a human being down here that gets a little overwhelmed, 
uh, at times thank you for leaving your beautiful sounding dimension and planet and bringing your students here to help out I realize that it's quite confronting the first few times you come into a human body I loved uh, your description of seeing your arms and legs grow before it was quite uh, quite entertaining what would you uh, what uh, final words would you like to share of wisdom to help uh, your personality uh, begin to understand who she is, what message she is, and how she can better deliver it. Love herself. Right, deep, yeah? I hope uh, everybody didn't fall asleep, and if you did, <laughs> oh well. <laughs> you gotta... But um, as you can hear, uh, she was so far away but I, it was so much information. I had to edit that really a lot. There was so much, um, there were so many pauses between and she was uh, a long, long way away. But um, that really gives us further insight that uh, everything that Dolores Cannon was talking about, uh, about three waves of volunteers and light workers and, and, the, and it reinforces my experience at 13 years of age um, with, dependent no religion here no you know banish the fly other than all of us that are tuning in on this have some sort of an inner calling uh, to bother to take the time to 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 log in tonight to, to watch this to hear this now I, before i go any further i must add i'm not trying to convince anybody I'm not, I consider myself to be research. I'm a member of the uh, Newton Institute research using deep hypnosis into garnering, after all, what's only been available for the last 20 years. Uh, great knowledge, not just about the astral, but about the etheric planes and bring it down to mankind. And obviously that's happening because mankind is ready for that information. And so now, uh, you know, all the time I'm taking people to that state and that's what they're giving me. So as opposed to believing some profound old book or something uh a lot all this information is as you're hearing it and this is just a few so uh this is this is what's important about this so if any of you are feeling that uh this resonates in you with you in a deep way then it's your truth i'm presenting it as evidence but not proof evidence proof is when you can uh you've got something sewn up, it, it, it no longer can be argued, but evidence is about what do you find that's worthy of consideration, study, to help us to get to a conclusion. And as a philosophical alchemist, metaphysician, I'm aware that at all times, everything has illusions within illusions and I'm not pretending that this, well, that I'm presenting tonight is anything other than interesting stuff. But why I play it is because you can hear independent, ordinary people under deep hypnosis giving very similar information. And I, uh, and if you listen to the questions, certainly my later questions as I got better, you'll notice that very rarely do I ask a leading question, what happens next, uh, you know, those sorts of things. So now we get into another interesting not strictly human being. Um, she came, uh, this client came to me uh, and done already a few past lives and she was struggling. Yet she's a very gifted with gardens and plants and, and, and uh, somewhat similar to the other one. She's just got a natural way with uh, and communication with uh, nature. Her guide called Akasha is an elven coming from the elven school and it, i had to edit this out unfortunately but we're talking about how uh, quite a few elves are coming into human body just like we heard those plants coming into human body um, quite a few elves are now choosing to come into human body because everybody wants to be a part of this um, ascension it really is a t-shirt moment uh, it's not easy but uh, it's a little bit like going through the green berets. It'll be uh, demanding. But when you get your green beret, you'll know that you got skills and qualities out of yourself. Maybe 
through the screaming sergeant major that you wouldn't normally have made an effort to achieve. And we find qualities and knowledge within ourselves in these super conscious states that are sometimes truly beautiful. Uh, I, sometimes my clients make me cry with the love and knowledge and wisdom that they describe in the higher etheric planes. And uh, this lady was coming up as one of those. Her empathy was extraordinary. Uh, her pain of being on the earth was deep. But uh, I've edited it out because, of course, it's getting long. And the, the last one I want to play is fairly lengthy. And uh, it says a lot. But this one I just wanted to play because I wanted to honor this. And it's got a little bit of strange information. I hope I'm giving you lots of padding from all sorts of directions on this. We come in during a discussion of how it might happen that suddenly millions of people will get, will get it. A bigger picture is discussed uh, as a bigger picture as discussed in Hindu scriptures and sometimes also related to in the rapture and many other moments of, of enormous epiphanal moments uh, happening simultaneously. David Wilcox goes on about the solar blasts and things at the center of the galaxy and many other people on the internet are talking about these sorts of things. Now, I've already had to edit out quite a bit. We've already had quite a bit of this discussion when we come into it, but it's got the meat on the lamb there for you. And then we get into a discussion about modern times because this was only about three months ago. That other one I just played was 2016. This was about three months ago. So we're getting to very modern stuff. And the stuff that I'm getting in the last when I was, uh, this time last year, I was in Germany. I was doing sessions there, work there. And uh, all of a sudden, I had intended to go to Peru to do an ayahuasca retreat there. But when I did some meditation, checking it all out, I was, uh, my guide said, no, you, you don't need that. Uh, go home. 2020, it's all starting. Um, and uh, I didn't. We weren't told about a pandemic, but of course, between volcanoes in the Philippines and earthquakes and and, and waters rising all around the world, and and uh, of course, the pandemic and the shutdown and all the rest of it, uh, uh, it, it was clearly a message to go home. And uh, you'll hear a little bit of discussion about how I was told, not just by her, but by other clients, that of course, all of this is planned. That for, even though mankind has freedom of choice, the great masters, the extraordinary, we're beyond masters now, we're reading, reaching up to the very, very high levels because the earth has a very unusual, uh, a very unusual um, future. It wasn't designed to be just another planet. This thing of having freedom of choice like we do on the earth is really, we have literally, at the very core of our being, our essence, essence, essential part is divine. And so we can exercise our freedom of choice and we choose that sometimes to, you know, experience dumb things, but everything balances. All things return to balance. Nothing is ever lost. Nothing is ever ultimately wrong. It's just experiences. And, uh, You'll hear us discussing how, or maybe I, have, I might have edited that out, but we discussed how it's all planned. Like when I take clients back to the fetus, was this life planned? Yes, can we know the plan? Why this, why that, why this body? Why this country? Why that male, female sex? Why that companion? Whatever it might be. And of course, I've had experiences sometimes with learning some characters that have been in our history, the ones that have changed history are usually very, very old souls, uh, masters. And some of them have chosen to come into DNA set to difficult, loser, uh, asshole, something like that, where they forget 
their extraordinary knowledge and abilities because they come down to the earth to exercise the freedom of choice to make things so or to try and get humans to change our course by doing things that are so outrageous so extreme that it creates a human outcry for change one example i had was of a soul that's carried guilt for 400 years not that that's a long time in eternity uh, about how she had done something wrong we discovered that she was one of the arch bishops or the bishops one of the very high ups of the spanish inquisition they involved with uh, sending many innocent uneducated people to terrible, terrible torture. I mean, what we humans can do to one another is really ugly. Fortunately, those times are over. Uh, and, uh, and discovering that uh, when she, when we got out of the body and I said, is that part of a plan? To her great surprise, she found out that she's actually had volunteered to go into very dense DNA to become so extreme about the Spanish Inquisition to be the worst exponent of it, that young priests coming up underneath this bishop would start to start to say, wait, 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 they can't all be demonic. And, uh, and that when this bishop died, there was a, a cry within the church that, hey, have, have we, are we still following the teachings of Christ here? Or are we doing our own shit? And, uh, and there was a change and that was through freedom of choice used very wisely. So we're gonna to have touch and I can cite quite a few others. And remember that countries have karma and that people therefore given that everything's planned, souls come to the earth, designated a particular country and other times we can come to many countries, but later on, if we've got particular karma or things to learn, we volunteer or are asked to go to a particular country who has a particular karma. And uh, we'll touch upon China. I think, yes, we're touching a little bit on the USA, but mostly about Trump and how just like Hitler and quite a number of other extraordinary old souls who came in to change arrogance or being on the wrong path to a more, uh, more questioning from the freedom of choice of the people underneath them. And even though, of course, there was great damage done by these, when you actually talk to the souls, as I'm able to do, of people put to death, burnt at the stake, uh, I find out that they knew at a soul level why that was going to happen to them, either karmically experiences and that uh, education comes from difficulty as well as from light uh, when we're at this dimension, not higher up, but in this dimension, it's part of our Green Beret training. Uh, I know I can't explain that all that well, guys, but uh, uh, it, there does there is some sense in it. Everyone will finally become enlightened, and they no need to be on the earth once everyone knows, huh? I don't understand either. It's like. I can't see what causes it, whether it's UFO, something, something shows billions of people proof of afterlife. I'm not supposed to see exactly what, but the non-believers believe. Uh -huh. And we're like, I told you. 
uh, there are some teachers on the earth that are banging on about the solar flashes from other galaxies, other su suns further away, that these things happen periodically on the earth, that the uh, Hindu religion has it ensconced in its teachings, that uh, every few many thousands of years cyclically, cyclically, there is a solar flash, not of our sun, but of suns far further away that create a great radiation belt that goes out through the galaxy and washes through the earth uh, and transforms. It has a, 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 a sudden rechanging of frequencies. Is there anything to do with that? Well, it's like people touch their head in pain. It's like something happened with their vision, something physical. Mm. So. It, it could be it's like a pain and they're grabbing their heads but when that happens it, something shift something shifted and those people holding their head do they die or they no alive? they understand oh. so it's a mass raise of consciousness yes it's a surge <laughs> It's planned. It doesn't hurt them badly. It's for the good. How else can you teach everyone at the last minute? There are still some that don't. Yeah, you know, it's a negative energy still entity still working against it, isn't it? Aren't they? Yeah. And uh, are we going to defeat these negative energies? Is it an assured thing? The ones that press the button, they haven't evolved. <laughs> yeah. Right. So the raising of China becoming such a bully type government mm. at this time, that's part of the plan? Mm. Yeah. No one else would do it. Yeah. Okay, no one so, else wanted to do that. So we need a fall guy like like Jesus needed a Judas. Yeah. Uh, so we need a full guy to be pla planned in so that they take the the chagrin but actually set up the lesson uh, so that they're part of a plan that mm. collectively their consciousness have agreed to play that part they truly believe it's their purpose <laughs> to take over uh. I think Trump will die soon. I'm not supposed to know that. <laughs> A bit late. <laughs> I won't tell anyone else. No, okay. Oh, well, if he dies, he dies. I mean, he's he's just <sighs> A dick. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, is he part of a plan too? I'm not sure he's in part. Uh, I mean, mm. he's such an obscure. He's the only person who stands up to the Chinese, of course. He's a he's the plan. He's part of the plan too. Mm. So you're going to take him out fairly soon, are you? I mean, he can't stay around he, too long. He's just going to upset things even mm, worse. He it? he feels bad. The and soul yet, the soul of Trump feels bad. Yeah. His ego is completely taken over, yeah. hasn't it? His reins have gone. <laughs> He's still a person. He's still a soul. Oh, of course. He he will feel bad when he looks back. He did his best. It was a hard task. No one wanted that. Not many people wanted that role. <laughs> well, explain the role. What role is it? In see? spirit, when it was presented, it's like a job, a, a job being advertised. Mm, the description. Uh, uh, job description. And what was the job description? For exactly Trump? what he had to do. Which is what? Spell it out. Dictator. Egomaniac. It was... It had to be someone powerful, a powerful soul. That soul was old in him. But I want to send some love to that soul. It's hard for that soul.
So let's get back to Australia, mm. where Paula and I live. When I've asked uh, guides in the past about the future of the Earth, I was told a few times that Australia will be a little bit of a Noah's Ark. Mm. It's like um, a, a globe, like a snow globe is over, the, over Australia protecting us. There's an energy force all over our country protecting us. It's the masters putting this around us. Why? Um, Not complaining. <laughs> yeah. It, it'll be a part. Oh, there's special souls here and work can continue we can send work out with our mind from Australia. It's a young continent for a reason. The earth is young for a reason under Australia. Less tarnished. Less negative karma. Yeah. Here's rock. What about the rock? just so powerful it emanates healing to the universe one of the first rocks of earth it's full of energy the aborigines are really in tune eh? <laughs> they know we should be like the aborigines <laughs> okay Nearly warn everybody else, but uh, we're down to our last one. It's a lengthy one. This one was done a little while ago. And uh, no, sorry, very recently, sorry, only a few weeks ago. And uh, I think it sort of wraps it all up for us uh, and is very up to date. Uh, and since this client has given me this information, it's been concurred because I don't, don't, don't share any information if I've only heard it once. Uh, but recently, uh, so just about everything you've heard so far um, is, is evidence-based. Again, I'm not pretending it's proof, but it's, uh, it's, it's information coming from a number of people and it's repeated uh, enough times to be able to say, well, you know, I can put it to for everyone's consideration. Now, uh, this client came in to me a few weeks ago about the direction her in her life, family matters, and a lot of where next type questions about, you know, philosophical questions or, you know, why am I here? Where am I going? What's the purpose in life? Does it all matter? It wasn't quite uh, clear as that, but uh, I recognize very quickly that in though at one at a human level, she had some troubles. I realized that her balance, uh, uh, her dignity, her uh, sense of justice showed an old soul uh, and, uh, and a good sense of humor too. Usually old souls have a really good sense of humor. They laugh at, and they laugh at themselves very easily. And um, she's bright and showed these characteristics. I did some numerology on her and discovered that she's very advanced amongst the most advanced numbers you can get. And uh, in a few sessions, uh, she transformed quite quickly from a relatively unaware uh, as, you know, no, she, she didn't know that she knew. She, I think she's starting to know that she knows that she, not only she's got gifts, but um, she has innate wisdom uh, and, uh, and a balance about her. Now, uh, you'll hear her collective consciousness speak sometimes, sometimes that she's speaking her super conscious, other times it'll be the we and you'll get that gist of, she's speaking on behalf of many. Uh, well, done the super, yeah, she's in the super consciousness. You'll see that super conscious mind is working well uh, and discussed her soul and her gifts. 
the super consciousness does, and her knowledge of the Earth's mission that she's on, and in general about the Earth, and especially the, the ascension. And like many light workers, she's told she doesn't need to do much. As she is here primarily to hold and raise the higher frequencies as the frequencies now are coming up. And that's a common thing I've, I've had. People come and see me feeling, uh, I think I'm a light worker or am I a light worker? And what am I supposed to be doing? And more often than not, they said, all you needed to do is awaken. Uh, and, and now what we need you to do is spend more time meditating, praying, spending time in nature, uh, eating finer foods, generally um, moving away from anything that's got to do with fear or criticism, uh, all those normal human traits that we all have about right and wrong and who's right and wrong or, you know, whatever it is. And of course, we're often our own worst enemy. We often have terrible states of, of um, not un being unworthy within ourselves. And that's a common theme amongst light workers until they awaken. In this talk, we hear uh, that we collectively manifest them and we learn that the earth will not be allowed to destroy itself through nuclear war. And when this flip or ascension is likely to happen. Now, before I play this, I've had another client say that this flip or the ascension flip is very imminent. And whilst it may be at the end of this year, it might also because they always say, look, you have to understand that there are billions of uh, independent little gods down here. And um, the good news is that since that meditation in April, when the whole planet meditated for enlightenment, uh, I'm told both from Schumann and everything else that uh, we were not struggling, we had hit critical mass. But the good news from the other side is that, hey, we're getting now so many people, the lights are going on. They, they, they showed it to me like lights going on around the earth. When you see from satellites, you see all these lights interconnecting the continents or go through the continents. And that all of a sudden lights are turning on as people are starting to know their Gnostic self, their connection to the source, moving beyond the critical, uh, what's wrong with the place to just let's love it. Let's just love one another and not stop finding fault and finding celebration. Right. By being herself, she's raising the energy and vibrations and that's most important. Of course, here she's uh, already in super, uh, in super conscious state and she's been She's channeling uh, from her superconscious somebody else showing her is talking through her. Let's spell it out. Why is raising the vibrations good for? In the ascension of the planet. There's lots here. So are we therefore agreeing that this subject just came up? I didn't ask. She just went into earth changes. Jody or you guys have manifested or the consciousness has manifest through Jody has come to the earth to be of assistance in the ascension. Correct. Okay. I just want to spell it out, okay? Just because, you know, we humans need these things spelt out. She doesn't need to do anything, just be. Yeah, that's important. She doesn't need to do anything just to be on the earth, right? Correct. What timetable do you see now, the year 2020? What do you see over the next few years, the next five to 10 years? What uh, can you tell us we're likely to experience? There's big changes. Mm -hmm. What can you just tell me about, please, that you can see coming up imagine a snake shedding a skin 
in emerging new and untainted clean you'll be aware that the earth is now uh, going through ripples of fear and anger that some of us that feel that we've had an inside knowledge of ascension are having doubts that it's taking much longer. I've been talking about ascension for over 50 years and some of Nino is therefore doubting that anything is actually happening uh, because it's taken much longer than I imagined initially. That's no doubt Nino's fault, I'm not saying, but what can you see as these changes. Are we going to have a, a collapse in the system totally, partially, or you know, banks, food, um, safety, governments, wars, atomic wars, nuclear wars? What can you say? Give us a, a picture that you foresee this change will entail and how we can best prepare. It's quickening now. It, it was delayed, but it's now speeding up again. The ascension. It is definitely happening. There's no doubt about that. It has to. So what makes you say that it has to now? It's the forward progress of all. forwards time so do we manifest do we stay on this uh, the types of governments and and, and no. political uh, toing and froing of egos of china america australia everywhere else or are we going to have a bigger change are we actually seeing a collapse of the old system or a change within that system it's a complete reset nothing will stay the same People will be more in control of their own lives. Sovereign. So, uh, but do we see therefore uh, a collapse of the old distribution system in that you're saying we become more sovereign, more self-aware? Is this simultaneous with or as the old system uh, collapses, it triggers our sovereignty? Yes. And in all this, the Earth's vibration is also raising. In conjunction with humanity's vibration raising. It's big changes, needed changes. Will there still be schools? Or will there still be a government? Or are we all going to be walking around with a whole new different framework and uh, I mean how far away is this we're talking next couple of years next five years it's saying it's accelerating next couple of years education will completely change kids will be encouraged to learn what interests them learn how to use their gifts more their own gifts Leaders doesn't need to be as many. They're more spokesperson, a spokesperson. But no, there's no levels. No one is better than anyone else. And no one feels better than anyone else. It's simply not that way anymore. It will happen quickly. It's not going to be a slow process when you say quickly you're talking about months years days a few minutes is it going to be a flip um, some people have spoken about all of a sudden we'll flip it'll be almost immediately others are taking talking about transitions happening years it's a bit confusing being in the body and uh, i'm the first to say i've talked about this for 50 years but i don't understand it anymore i've lost some Face. So when you say it happens quickly, uh, give me a little more detail, please. The flip you talk about is instant. Mm -hmm. The ripple effects mm -hmm. will take a couple of years. 
but not the positive benefits that will be instant. Maybe less, maybe more. It will be a flip of consciousness. Instant. The flip of consciousness will be instant. And this is likely to happen this year, next year? December 2020. Mm -hmm. Is that a planetary-wide thing or will it be those that have been It's prepped? the planet. Sorry? It's the planet. It's the whole planet? It's the planet. Oh, the consciousness of Gaia? Yes. That is the flip. And the resonance will rise. Oh, I see. And then it'll affect... A lot. And then... And that'll affect us. Correct. But we affect that as well. It's both ways. Humanity and Earth pull each other up. Yeah, if you can understand the skepticism at this level when you see so much insanity out there, so many greedy leaders and... It had to be this way. Mm. It is the shedding. We'll shed our old ways, yeah? Correct. And then into the next two years, this will then, we will start to... It will settle. We'll settle down and we'll feel this new urge to be more loving, creative, sharing. I'm not trying to put words in your word, just correct me if I'm wrong. Humanity won't know any other way of being. Mm. With less violence? Yes. Less greed and more sharing? Yes. More love. People will be less concerned about themselves and more of others. Mm. I've spoken with other guides and elders in the past that nevertheless we need to diminish the population of the earth because um, to feed seven billion people plus etc that many souls will not be returning to the earth uh, does that concur with you correct it is the balancing out of the dark and the light mm. i've had a few people picture a future earth hypnosis talking about some parts of the earth and the not too distant future within say 100 years they're so contaminated it will be unsafe to be there. Do you see that or is that another time? Is that a timeline that's different now? It was a possible timeline. It wasn't allowed. It wasn't allowed. So, given freedom of choice, how can it not be allowed? If we ch humans choose to be stupid, how can you stop it? It wouldn't have just in affected earth if uh, nuclear weapons had been allowed to be used it would have affected much much more as ripple effects will affect other parts of the other correct oh, okay that makes sense obviously those of us who are expecting this ripple will will, will change frequency rather quickly yes. those that are not so awakened will they be in conflict with the flip hmm they have a choice, the choice to take the higher, the positive path, the higher resonance path, or not. Those who do not will continue their time but then not come back. The negative polarized people will just leave. Two classrooms somewhere else, yeah? Correct. And so, therefore, are we now saying that nuclear holocaust is no longer viable? Is it off the table? It's off the table. It's off the table. Okay. Uh, and so this flip will happen around about December. Yes. Mm it won't flip everyone but the frequencies of the earth will change and that'll affect us and therefore we'll reinvest that into Gaia and help that manifestation is quickening uh, to take place both in the earth and in many humans that will affect the fence sitters and then they will either choose to accept it 
and raise their frequencies and consciousness and become more joyful themselves. Most have already chosen. Most, okay. And those who would choose not or are, are incapable of higher frequencies, will any of them be, be have their bodies killed uh, during this flip? Will the frequencies be too much for them? Will we see mass suicides or something? No, I, I don't see that. I see them just leaving maybe not not on earth for as long as what they would have been mm -hmm. and how will they leave naturally they'll die through a natural 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 death yeah but they they won't live as long and they won't be aware And our needs for food and power, electricity, uh, you know, comforts that we take for granted now, such as warm homes and distribution of food. Talk to me about uh, those human requirements, uh, please. Humans will have what they need. And it'll be a lot simpler than what it is now. And people will be much more in touch with what they are consuming, creating, being, doing. Okay, sounds pretty good. So we're saying that from January of 2020, by then this flip will have taken place and already the distribution or a fairer distribution of the resources of the earth will begin to take place. Correct. So we're in a few months away from the ascension actually starting to be tangible and seen and felt by the majority of human beings. It's already started. Yeah, well, at the moment, you know, TV sets are still full of news with near wars between India and China and China and the US. and and spies and, uh, and the like, uh, freedom of, of speech being suppressed increasingly by our governments, blah, blah, blah. So you see things differently from your perspective than if you're actually in a body turning on the news. I'm not being, I'm not Correct. trying to be argumentative and all I see is increasing poverty and friction. It so had I to want get to believe it, don't misunderstand me. I'm not trying to have an argument with you, but, but you're saying that by December, all, all of Nino's fears will be out the window, yeah? <laughs> Are you saying that? I need you to tell me yes Correct. Right, Nino. <laughs> Correct, Nino. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hang in there, Nino. Hang in there, Nino. Thank you. <laughs> because somebody's going to be kicked in the, in the knackers by the time I get back up into heaven if, uh, if this doesn't happen. Just having a, a, a dark joke with you guys. Thank you for answering all these questions. So now, uh, so Nino speaks on Zoom a little bit. Am I allowed to share this information uh, with others? Is this free to disseminate or is it just for Nino's knowledge? You can share. Okay. Okay. So I ended the audios. I know they were long. I hope they were informative. Some are repeating, but I wanted to play quite a few to show you that it's coming from everywhere. And as we, I'm sure we all heard, uh, I kept the announcement of an actual date until the very, very end. Because over the years, we're going from very nebulous sort of discussions about earth changes to now we're right on the verge of it. And of course, I've been told by a couple of others, not just this client, that the pandemic is definitely uh, uh, dividing people. Uh, that some people are just coming into uh, uh, anger management problems um, and others are actually using it for, uh, for dissociating from the dramas. Not that we shouldn't be aware of what's happening outside, but spending more time with their family, with their animals, walking through nature. So especially those of us are lucky enough to be in Australia where we have plenty of nature. I live in the Dandenongs, like many of us do. 
And around here, there are extraordinary places with kangaroos and ducks and everything that are so tame, you can pat them. And, uh, and I really feel that uh, animals are getting closer to us and trees, more of us are identifying with uh, some of the earlier sessions about the elves and the, and the lady who was coming from the plant thing that we're starting to identify with plants more. Um, and that we humans, as she called us, uh, will be using and understanding the plants and the knowledge from the plants as medicine and all the rest of it and uplifting us in so many ways. And hopefully the more disastrous side of this uh, change of consciousness is being alleviated by more and more of us manifesting with our mind, with our goodwill, speaking less about fear, speaking less, every time we speak about fear or anger, we're bringing that vibration around us. So whenever, and that, that can be a habit of the mind. I, as a clinical hypnotherapist, uh, I can tell you that some minds are stuck in concrete. They've got their fixed ideas and they will not change. We all need to change now. Many of us, oh, we're already changing. Listen to this, we're already changing. But we have an influence on everybody else. And the way that we show our love and nurturing and tell our loved ones and remind them, you mean something to me, you're important to me, I love you, regardless of whether we clash. Uh, but we also heard from the first one, her guide was saying, if somebody's rubbing in the wrong way, distance yourself. If you're a light worker, do it in a polite way. We don't have to be angry about it, but we can just say, no, I won't do that. No, I won't go there. So we're really being told now to come into our own awareness, our own uh, sovereignty. You've heard the word sovereignty a few not times tonight. And that we should start to celebrate that if we're on the earth together, those of us lucky to be born in Australia, a karma can't be too bad. And uh, therefore, I think we should all congratulate each other and say this little group here, uh, are the types of souls we've been talking about, the, the light workers, the, 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 the th third wave. It doesn't matter. Putting a term on it doesn't matter. It's the fact that we care. We care uh, that we want and we aren't going to manifest. We are manifesting a better planet. We came to the earth. I can tell you that from other types of hypnosis sessions, when I'm told of how many countless souls wanted to be on the earth to have the t-shirt moment uh, that it's overwhelming so whatever our background as we come collectively to this change of us of consciousness we're now really beginning to unify and this picture i was shown by a master recently because i'm not very visual but he was showing me all these lights turning on and he he was so pleased he said you have no idea there's so many more than we hoped for this is really really working well and we might be able to mitigate some of the worst things that we expected could happen from having to shed the negative karma the more people meditate the more they visualize uh and it doesn't have to be strong just goodwill just will for good and the way we treat each other, the checkout chick at the supermarket, our friends, our family, even our estranged friends, we reach out to them uh, and just, even if we don't wanna spend a lot of time, but we offer them forgiveness. Even if we don't say it to them, we just, in our prayers, I offer forgiveness and I offer apologies to those that I've harmed in the past. Forgiveness both ways is very important. And the last one, which is most important is forgiving ourselves the ways that we've let ourselves down. Right. Uh, I th think that's about it. So I throw it over to you, George. Wow. You've got certainly a lot to share, uh, Nino. I think it was nonstop. And um, um, <laughs> in order for you to keep this momentum up, do you want to keep up the momentum? And we have another session sometime. Well, uh, uh, right now I want to have a meal and uh, a lie down and maybe a Bex, uh, if anyone is old enough to remember the so, you know, <laughs> maybe, commercials. Maybe we tired. And I think I just want to go and hug my kids. 
Yeah. But uh, look, I'll leave it to you, George, if you find that there's enough uh, interest in these things. And, uh, you know, I have plenty of subjects to, to talk about. Uh, and again, it's evidence based. So uh, uh, I'm, ha I'm happy to do that. But um, Faye, it's nice to see you smiling, dear. Um, I must say you've got uh, a really good looking smile going there. It's good to see you. We must get together and have a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Troy, now, just for those who don't know, um, uh, Faye there is a very gifted uh, Chinese herbalist and uh, naturopath uh, operating up here in the Dandenongs. Uh, and Troy is also one of the most gifted naturopaths I know. And both of these two therapists have, I know, because I've worked with them under hypnosis, have extraordinarily talented souls. George, of course, is, we all know George, he's a pain in the ass and wonderful guy. The work that you do, George, the people you bring together, uh, your skills with yoga, and of course, with your good wife, Christine, um, you know, thank you for giving me those opportunities uh, over those years ago. And now to give me this opportunity, it's not my information, I'm just sharing stuff from others, but it would be a shame to get this information, not share it, because you can see that it seems to want to get out. So I think that you facilitated that. Yeah, the good news is um, we're allowed to have gatherings again. Um, yeah, yeah, right. One, so we're going to start our cinema out in the garden uh, Saturday, Saturday evening. Uh, keep out, keep a look out for that because officially we couldn't have any gatherings over the last six months, just about. <laughs> officially. <laughs> I didn't say that, did I? <laughs> You gotta be careful what you're saying, mate. <laughs> um, <laughs> open forum. A lot of the stuff you, you shared seems to correspond to the uh, the Hopi prophecy rock. You know, that's really coming really from ancient um, uh, carvings and the, the Hopis are still um, interpreting uh, and guiding us to what, what those prophecies are all about. And they show two paths for, for humanity. Uh, and the the old style of um, competition and profits and things like that and techno technocracy, uh, the path they show with that, it starts getting rocky and then eventually peter peters out. And there's another path which uh, reaches the end of the rock but doesn't stop there. It just goes around the corner and that's where we are on that on that corner. Um, I wanted to put the link up. Uh, Greg Braden describes it very well, uh, and it seems to corroborate um, just about everything you've talked about tonight. Um, yeah, there's, there's a heap, like I said, there's a heap of stuff, and I reckon we could uh, reconvene. Uh, I did get some messages on the chat saying, yes, please, yes, of course. Oh, wait, I wasn't, I wasn't reading them. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I'll... I'll Get that organised, and we'll have our we'll have our weekly things, and uh, you might be able to kick in again in um, maybe a couple of couple of Mondays or something like that, or three Mondays, wh wh whatever suits you. You know, because I think it's very valuable. Um, well, okay. Look, um, I'm doing a Zoom somewhere else, and and on that one, I'm giving the, uh, a few little things, and I'm doing presentations of what it's like to die, or what it's like to come into the fetus, or what it's like to be uh, in various states of, of of consciousness, way beyond just our normal, um, you know, astral. Um, uh, which is uh, so. If that's an, of an interest to to various people, um, then please mention it to Roger. Send something into it's not to Roger. Sorry. To George, and um, yeah, oops, uh, everybody, everybody, oops, <laughs> sorry, George. Um, so please feed it out into George because he's a facilitator here, and uh, without him, uh, we wouldn't have met tonight. Uh, although many of you I know, and Schlemit, I just noticed Schlemit. My God, you're a client from bloody hell, what, thirteen years ago or something? Is that you, Schlemit? Can I see your face? Anyway, I just got, I just saw in the name of a client that I, wow. And quite a few other clients that are on, on just thank you very much and uh, for supporting and coming online. And for those that I don't know, you know that in spirit I do and love you all.
And uh, okay, George, look, um, we were going to do a and a but I think it's way too late. For most people, it's a working day tomorrow. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, I've got a client today, tomorrow as well. Yeah, we so, can reserve quick Q&A for another session if you like. That's yeah, I, I'm okay with it. I think it was fairly knitted up and I'm sure people have questions, but I tried to give as much as I possibly could. Again, I'm offering it for your consideration. I'm not trying to sell anything here. Uh, I'm not trying to, to say believe or not believe. Just, uh, just that you can uh, consider it all and, uh, and if it resonates with you, good. You know, if it doesn't, uh, don't worry about it. Uh, because either way, after this ascension happens, all of this is completely academic crap from a dimension back. <laughs> and I'm so ready for that. <laughs> George, mate, thank you. All right, thank you. Um, if anybody wants to stay online for just a little bit of a chat, uh, I, I, I got to finish up too soon. Um, but if you've got something to to discuss and have to uh, just work on, uh, just have a bit of a chat to anybody. Um, All right, George, I'm going to just uh, I'm going to love you and leave you so that you guys can talk and you know say things behind my back, <laughs> as well as share other things and see if there's enough interest. But again, thanks for the love. Oh, can I just, uh, sorry, my guides just said, seal, close the close the group. Can I just do a quick little closing meditation or just a 30 second one? Um, sorry guys. So as we, uh, everyone please just feet on the ground in contact with Gaia, remembering that our bodies are made up of cells and atoms that return to Gaia when our soul separates from the body. And in celebration of the extraordinary union between earth, which makes up our bodies and soul, which makes up divinity, we're spiritualizing matter on the earth in a unique way. Uh, we are evolving in a very, very particular unusual way, which is why so many extraordinary elder minds are fascinated and interested in what's happening on this tiny little planet. So reach out to them and thank them, ask them for their continued help and guidance, but also to start to celebrate without needing anything anymore. But we're starting to know that we know who we are. And I don't need a priest or a Nino or anything to have that Gnostic contact with the I am that I am that I am. But our guides have led us here patiently. We reach out to them and give them a big hug. And here's my pom-poms. And thank you guys, because this is Ascension is a team effort. Not those of us, not just those of us who came onto the earth, but those that are guiding in every way. Uh, it takes everything from a general to a cook to be victorious as an army. And so, and I'm not meaning to put cooks down. Uh, so we all have to reach out to one another and celebrate and smile at one another. And I'm smiling to my guides and to every other guide that's a member of this group with fraternity and sorority and respect and love and joy. May our frequencies keep on moving higher now I remind, I'm being asked to remind everybody to go to the temples of healing and to use the freedom of choice to frequentize our energies higher every time we find our mind, our human mind, slipping into the old ways. Become aware of it. Thank yourself for noticing it and switching the radio channel up and moving the frequencies up. And this will make things easier and easier and easier for those that are working out of body. And of course, I suppose we should thank Gaia. Thanks Gaia. Thank you for your enormous patience. And on behalf of myself, I apologize for every way that I've ever harmed you knowingly or unknowingly. And I hope that with these wonderful souls that are coming from all around the universe to help to repair you and to teach us 
uh, we can be in symbiosis with Gaia from now on with more joy and, sim and symbiotic uh, love and respect. Uh, good. We close this group. We all draw our energies back into ourselves. Don't leave yourself open, please. Especially once you leave your room, make sure that you compact yourself. And if you want to give a little nod to your guides and to the elders now would be appropriate. And so in this uh, meditation. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to love you. I need to get some food into my body because I'm getting the shakes. Thanks, George. Speak soon, again soon. And Chris and everybody else, Louise and all my old uh, clients of a few there. Thank you for joining in. Bye. Good night. Thank you. Turn on your microphones if you want to have a chat. It's not going to be long, I don't think. <laughs>